Good evening and welcome, welcome back into the Chapel of God's Gift at Dulwich to our wonderful chapel in which we're blessed always to hear the word and to listen to the music of our chapel choir. Again, we're sorry that you can't be here with us today and be part of the service alongside our choristers and the Reverend Butler, our chaplain. But at least you're here with us virtually and we can share words and music with you as this term begins to draw towards its conclusion. Uh, another term in which boys have been tested by challenges that they probably didn't expect and their teachers too. But I think they've met them. And if there's a unity in the readings that you'll hear today, it's probably a story of perseverance at a time of hardship and of the need for a clarity of vision to see through that. I hope you enjoy this service. I hope that early in 2021, we can be back in here together, this chapel community who are so important to the life of Dulwich College, most notably the parents of our choristers and friends and family and others from the wider community for whom our services give solace and comfort and I hope create a sense of inspiration as they go forward into their next weeks. O oh Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, bring grace to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy 
Our Old Testament reading comes from Genesis, chapter 7 to chapter 9. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Now, the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. So God said to Noah, make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. The Lord then said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. For forty days the flood kept coming on the earth, and as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. After forty days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. When the dove returned to him, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. The second lesson is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18. Jesus told them a parable about the need to pray at all times and never to lose heart. This is what he said. Once there was a judge in this town who neither feared God nor cared about people. In that same town there was a widow who kept coming to him and demanding, give me a ruling against the person I'm suing. For a while he refused, but eventually he said to himself, 
I'm not afraid of God and I don't care about people, but this widow keeps pestering me. So I'm going to give her a favorable ruling or else she'll keep coming back until she wears me down. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us.
The story goes that years ago in Illinois, in the USA, a young man with six months schooling to his credit ran for an office in the legislature. As might be expected, he was beaten. Next, he entered business, but failed at that too, and spent the next 17 years paying the debts of his worthless business partner. He fell in love, he became engaged, and sadly his fiancée died. He had a nervous breakdown. Later he ran for Congress and again was defeated. He became a candidate for the vice presidency position and lost. Two years later, after that, he was defeated in his bid to become a senator. But later on he ran for office again, and this time he was successful. This time he was elected. That man was Abraham Lincoln. Often referred to as one of the greatest presidents of the United States of America. It's a wonderful story that chimes loudly of the power of perseverance. And it is of this perseverance and singularity of vision that I want to speak this evening. Our Old Testament passage reminds us of the wonderful story of Noah. I always smile when I consider how his contemporaries must have viewed his ark-building fascination. It would be one thing to suddenly change employment focus and become a shipbuilder, but quite another thing to do that so many miles from any water. What kept Noah going? What allowed him to continue with his vision in the hardest and darkest of times? The answer is simple. He was utterly committed to his vision because he knew that that vision was pure and right. His ability to walk well into the future came from his assuredness of the voice that had directed him in the past. The direction of his feet was dependent upon the message in his heart. For some of us, governmental directives in 2020 as a result of COVID-19 and the subsequent necessary changes have been inconvenient. But for some of us, the changes and their consequences have shaken us to the very core Whatever your situation, as you watch and listen to this service online, we think of you. We pray for you. The message of our gospel passage is clear, and it stands as an instruction, but also as an encouragement to all of us as we seek to live life right at this difficult time. Especially, may I add, in the run-up to Christmas, that festival which traditionally highlights the centrality of community. And the message from the Gospel passage is simple. First, to persevere in the pursuit of our vision of what is right in our service of others. And secondly, to take heart. God hears the cry of those in need. Jesus told his disciples that it was important to keep positive and not to lose heart. He told them to pray ceaselessly. And then he told them this story about the widow who annoyed a corrupt judge to get the justice that she deserved. The widow in today's passage represents to us today the people whose voices run the risk of being unheard those who might particularly suffer and struggle as we move into this traditional time of festivity and joy. The widow also represents the importance of persevering in pursuit of justice and compassion for others, however small we might feel. 
Within the Jewish scriptures, there is a special concern for specific types of people. Widows were amongst these. So Jesus has a reason for making the star of his story a widow. He wanted to make sure that everyone knew that it was one of the most vulnerable, one of the most troubled, one of the most oppressed, one of the loneliest who was able to get the justice that she deserved. We are to take heart that God hears the cry of those in need and our cry for them. But the message also calls us to persist in our own pursuit of what is right in our service to others. The prophet Isaiah spoke to his people as he would speak to us today. In Isaiah 58 we read, If you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. We are called to both find the needs around us and to respond to those needs. We are called to bring light in darkness, love in loneliness. As we move towards the festivals of Advent and Christmas, we think about the Incarnation, that in Christian belief, God becomes flesh and dwelt amongst us in the person of Jesus. Love becomes manifest amongst us in Christ, but initially in embryo, the smallest of things. These thoughts on the incarnation were brought home to me recently when my youngest son, my two and a half year old, Isaac, found an acorn on the floor as we walked through a wood. He held it up and then he put it in my pocket. When I looked at it later, I was reminded of the power and potentiality of the smallest of things, an acorn becoming an oak tree. The widow in the gospel had little. She was amongst the smallest in her community, but through her worked great change. Not only does this give us hope, when we struggle in loneliness, confusion and sadness. But it gives us hope when we consider how to respond to those around us who are particularly affected by our current restrictions and the consequences thereof. We are not called to be great. We are not called to be famous. We are not even called to be noticed or recognised but we are called to persist in our small acts of service in love to those around us. We are called to love. We are called to persist in love. We are called to find the needs around us and give in our service to others as God in Christ gave love to us. It is with this perseverance, based on the purity of our vision, that loving and caring for others is right, that we are called to reach out in compassion to others at this time of need. We are called to be as the widow, in our prayers as well as in our acts of love, in, pers in pursuit of what is right for those who struggle, particularly at this time and in the lead up to Christmas. We are called to be light and may we shine brightly the light of love. Amen.
we give thee humble and hearty thanks, O most merciful Father, for the memory in this place of Edward Elaine, our founder and benefactor, by whose benefit this whole college is brought up to godliness and good learning. And we beseech thee to give us grace to use these thy blessings to the glory of thy holy name, that we may here fulfill the good intent of our founder and become faithful servants to thee and to our country and to our world, and at last be made partakers in thy heavenly promise of the life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so as we close our service together this evening, we do so with the words from a blessing, a Hebrew blessing, an ancient blessing known as the priestly blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us, now and always, and be gracious to us. Amen. Thank you.